I'm a Doctor Who watching, Harry Potter loving, comic book reading geek. Proud to say it. Growing up as a girl in the 1980s, though, I didn't really have lots of female role models for geeking out over. Do not get me wrong, you guys. Princess Leia and Wonder Woman are great, but these are not the kind of costumes you rock if you're shaped like R2-D2. <laughs> Along come She-Ra and Jem, and they're fantastic, but I did not have that hair. Still don't. I did not see myself in popular culture. It was frustrating. Now, a few decades later, my daughters grow up in a geek community that is increasingly open and inclusive. We should be celebrating it, and today we're going to talk about how you can help it continue. Comic book writer Steve Orlando has called comics a place where everyone can have their own hero myth, your own personal folklore. Okay, but comic book superheroes have traditionally been white, cisgender men. Think Steve Rogers, Tony Stark, Peter Parker, Clark Kent, Bruce Wayne, Barry Allen. You see where I'm going with this, right? Doesn't look like most of us. So what happens when the heroes in your midst don't look anything like you? Women, people of color, people with disabilities, those in the LGBTQIA community, we've been waiting a long time to see ourselves as anything more than minor bit players in the story. And we did have some niche characters. In the 1960s, we got Black Panther, the first black superhero to have his own comic book. Oh, and then Monica Rambeau, our tragically forgotten Captain Marvel. In the early 2000s, a member of the X-Men, North Star, became the first openly gay superhero in a mainstream comic book. He even got married on the cover of an issue in 2012. It was awesome. This is important. When we don't understand, when we don't celebrate diversity, when we force our comic book characters and our heroes to look like one small group, the rest of us are forgotten. Imagine what it felt like for lots of little boys around the world when Miles Morales, a teenager of mixed race from Brooklyn, declared, I am Spider-Man. Or try to feel this. When little kids around the country, Americans got to see Sam Wilson, a person of color, take up the mantle of Captain America. I can speak more authoritatively about another moment. In early 2015, I rushed to my local comic book store because Mighty Thor had hit the stands. A woman was wielding Mjolnir. She was powerful and brave and leading warriors, and I wanted to live in every frame of it. We've since learned that Mighty Thor is a familiar face of Dr. Jane Foster, someone we already knew. As Jane, she lives with an illness and fights for her life. As Mighty Thor, she battles to save Middle Earth. And the exciting changes keep coming. From the new Riri Williams Iron Man or Iron Heart storyline to Amadeus Cho as the Hulk. This is exciting for some of us. Not everybody is happy, I guess, predictably. Angry fans have accused comic book creators of publicity stunts and of social justice warriorism. There have even been suspicions that white men are being written out of the comic book universe completely. <laughs> Byron Johnson of Heroic Universe said, we love these characters because they inspired us. They motivated us because we wanted to be like them. Taking the name and giving it to someone else just doesn't have the same meaning. Okay. All right. That may be true for longtime fans, but for anybody who's not a white man and not used to seeing yourself as a hero, this is a big deal. I'm a regular contributor and panelist at Salt Lake Comic Con. As you can see, I'm always very professional. In interviews, Comic-Con panelists who specifically speak on topics of diversity have said that it's important to them to speak out about this. They've talked about struggling to find strong role models. They've talked about feeling marginalized in the geek community. 
Many of them, well, one in particular, not me, we just put it up there like that, said that they participate in these conversations because they want to make it better for the next generation, chipping away at that iceberg, one talk at a time. And we've seen lots of chips at that iceberg. So how do we make it continue? I've got three steps for you, okay? First, create your own media. Now, I'm not artistic, you guys, but you don't have to be Stan Lee or Steve Ditko to create art in our community. Meet Sam and Maddie, two 20-year-olds with Down syndrome who wanted, they love zombie movies, and they never saw themselves in them. So they decided to create their own zombie movie that featured people with disabilities. It's called Spring Break Zombie Massacre, and it was featured in Time magazine. Technology has reduced drastically the cost involved with creating your own media. You can make your own comic books online. My daughter's made one herself. But mainstream comic book houses have played a role in trying to expand who we see of as the hero. For example, in 2014, Marvel brought back Ms. Marvel. Only this time, Kamala Khan was taking up the mantle. Kamala Khan is a Pakistani teenager. She's Pakistani-American. She's growing up in New Jersey. Her family's devout Muslim. When she becomes Ms. Marvel, she has to learn how to blend her superhero identity with those of her faith and her community. Kamala was created by G. Willa Wilson and Sana Amanat, two Muslim-American women. One of them, want to guess, grew up Pakistani-American in New Jersey. They literally made a comic book that looked just like them. How cool is that? Earlier this year, Black Panther came back to the shelves, and geeks of the world rejoiced. This Wakandan royal returned, this time written by one of the leading voices of what it means to be black in America today, Ta-Nehisi Coates. He's an author, an Atlantic columnist, a MacArthur Genius Award winner, and now he's writing a comic book. He's also joined by poet and feminist Roxanne Gay, who will help bring out the stories of the women of Wakanda. All right, next. You guys, get involved. Talk about the things you like. Engage in the conversation. We have the ability to reach outside our immediate communities and drive the conversation about our media. Online, fans who are passionate, believe me, I've been in Twitter conversations with them, they debate the Riri Williams Ironheart storyline or celebrate the casting announcement for the new Black Panther movie. We can do more than talk, though. Thanks to the growth in regional comic conventions, the chance to play your hero happens more than just on Halloween. Across the country and around the world, adults are spending days, weeks, and months even creating realistic costume play so that they can be the hero for just that day. I've dabbled in cosplay a few times. Uh, just a few months ago at Salt Lake Comic Con, this photo of me with um, other Ghostbusters cosplayers was retweeted by Paul Feig, the director of the movie Ghostbusters. He called us his people, <laughs> and I died. <laughs> you guys, creators are listening to what we talk about. The conversations we have matter. In interviews with artists and authors at Comic-Con, many of them spoke of direct impact that conversations about diversity have on the creations that they put out. They make character choices and choose to make them just a little bit different than they initially imagined them because of what we say. Also, Paul Feig retweeted me. I just want to say that one more time. <laughs> All right, finally, and this is important, you guys. You've got to vote with your money, okay? We have so many opportunities to seek out something new. Somebody who doesn't look like you, or sound like you, or pray like you. Throw some money at them, all right? Imagine how much more fun it would be to encounter some diversity beneath the mask of a hero or a character you already know and love. This is happening outside the comic book world as well. Think about four women busting some ghosts, or a young Jedi this time a woman wielding a lightsaber. Now, let me tell you what. I have a friend who wasn't really that psyched. He wasn't jazzed about the Ghostbusters movie. He was like, I want to support female-led projects, though. What can I do? And I said, you buy a ticket. You buy two. You don't have to go. <laughs> but you're buying the tickets. 
mainstream characters are get, being given diverse makeovers, we'll call them. They're not necessarily upgrades, unless they look more like you, and then it certainly feels like an upgrade. We can celebrate and support it. It's a kid's dream come true to see themselves as the hero. And it came along just in time for some grown-ups, too. Thank you.